So let's get started. Here's the plastic, just seven pieces this time. I don't know about you, but I think this trim wheel is gorgeous. As you can imagine, I've got a few of these lying around now and I've got my spare change in them and on all sorts of junk, just as a little tray. And here's the hardware. Again, very little to it. Now let's start by assembling a modular component that I call a Rotten 6003F. With one of these, you have 50% of any trim wheel for any type of aircraft. Soon I'll be making a Fusion 360 design video and showing you how easy it is to incorporate this into a design for any new trim wheel. Here's how to assemble it. First, we want to apply the friction disc. Now this is simply a piece of cork. Anything between about 30 millimeters and 38 millimeters in diameter. You can cut it out of a piece of cork with scissors if you can't find a disc the right size. And you also want to punch a hole through the middle that is eight millimeters in diameter. Ideally, you want it one to one and a half millimeters thick. Now actually I'm using a special kind of cork. It's called nitrile bonded. I prefer this because I found that normal cork can start to squeak a bit if you crank up the tightness and the friction. So if you can get nitrile bonded, it's much better. So we just stick the cork disc to this face of the base unit and just go over, get it over the center hole there. Okay. Now, Put this plug through the bearing, the bearing into the cap, and fasten it all together with 20 millimeter M4 countersunk screws. Now I'm not going to worry about how tight I clamp this down just yet because we're going to do a little bit of calibration and testing later on. But for now, just make it a little bit snug and, and that can still move. Now we pop this encoder into the base. These have some little legs on them at the side. We press those in. They don't do anything. And these legs here, the three legs, we will just open those out a touch, fold them back a touch, and then pop that encoder into the base. Now you'll need to twist this plug a little bit just to get the right alignment until it dro drops in like that. Another reason not to have this too tight at the moment. And now when you twist that plug you'll feel the encoder just going through little clicks. Now we just connect the wires. Remember we used red, blue, white for the mag holes. Here we use yellow, black and green. Always in the same order, yellow, black, green. It's the same simple crimping mechanism as before, but I'm going to go slowly with it this time because it can be fiddly initially until you get the neck. I always need my reading glasses for this and you might even want to buy yourself some of these watchmakers glasses just to help your eyesight. I peel off a very short piece of insulation. I have a little tub that holds the crimps I make sure I have a look at them and that they're clean and they don't have frayed rough edges because that will make it hard to thread these. You can see you just press them and just pick them up just by a little bit of finger stickiness. And then slide the wire onto the end. Hold it up like that, don't throw it around then bring that to the leg. Now you want the legs of the encoder tilted so that they're close to dropping into the channels but not so far that we can't slide this on and then we simply slide that on and it stops going forward at a certain point because the insulation presses against the leg and now we can press this ferrule into the, I'm going to swap that to my right hand, we can press this ferrule into the channel, like that. Just a little bit of a press at first, it'll hold it in place, and then we crush it in place. 
the wire slots in the channel just giving it a little bit of grip keeps it out of the way and that's one done I'll do another one slowly so YBG so black next so a little bit of insulation threaded off put, peeled off grab one of these slide it on press that over and then touch it on just press the wire into the channel a bit that holds it in place carefully rotate so you can get your best hand on the screwdriver press it in so already it's held in place a little bit and then crush the black in have a quick look that no stray wires have uh, spread across and make a contact in the wrong place and that's two done and that's three done no soldering yes just a little bit fiddly at first with these things it's nice to have a little tub to put them in be cautious about how you set your space up it's so easy just to flick this and chuck it across the room so make sure you are careful with that I put the lid on as soon as I finished and safely put them out of the way and that's all the crimping done now we want to carefully orientate this rotten 6003 unit with the base and these wires are going to go down that channel so being careful not to drag the wires out let's get the wires in that channel All this stuff is a lot easier than the spade grip, so it's a good one to start with. And then lower the Rotten 6003 in place like that. And you've got your wires coming out the back. And now with 12mm M4 countersunk screws we'll hold it in place. Again, this printing this little tool with just the right size of Phillips head makes things a lot easier. And that just go straight in. That's one. Okay, let's wire up the RJ45. We'll keep the same order, yellow, black, green. We're only using three wires this time, so I think it's prudent not to use adjacent channels because there's a small risk of making connections across channels, but use alternate channels. So I'll use So I'll, so I'll use channel 1 for the yellow, then the third channel for the black, and then the fifth one for the green. So just to be clear on this, I'm peeling off the insulation. There is an argument you don't need to do this because the teeth of this device should cut through but a lot of the problems I had with the spade grip were when the teeth didn't quite cut through so I am peeling off the insulation and I'm just I'm pressing the insulated wire into the channel so that the revealed wire is just over the teeth and then clip nice sound connection now we pop this RJ45 through the side here like that. Put these wires, wires back here. And put the back on it. There's a flattened face that you can line up. And it's six millimeter countersunk screws. And now we fit this dovetail quick release plate. So just to get the orientation right, the quick release plate drops vertically, so the opening's at the bottom. When it's fitted on, the Ethernet socket comes in at the bottom right at about 4 o'clock. So if we turn that over you should find the line, the, you should find the holes aligning just like that. And now we want 8mm screws to fasten this on. 
See how useful this thing is? Unfortunately, you're going to need to print another one because we're going to use this now. Because finally we can fit the trim wheel to the Rotten 6003. Now first, I'm just going to get approximately the right tightness. And you adjust that just by tightening these screws here. And then fit the wheel on. There's a little D ledge there. You just need to rotate until you find that. There you go, that's on. And how does that feel? Not bad, not bad. I think a touch more. Oh yeah, that's nice. And now a 14 millimeter screw to hold it together. Good and tight. There we go. That's a nice action. The final piece, this little cap, press fits over the top like that and it should just clip in. Very nice. If you do need to get it out there's a little slot there that will allow you to get a screwdriver in. So that's it. Nice, eh? Okay, let's move on to the latest addition to the Authenticate set of controls for the Spitfire, and that is the rudder trim wheel. Now, the base of this is absolutely identical to the elevator trim wheel. I've printed this base unit in the green, which I think looks quite nice. Um, it's wired the same, uh, the back is the same, the mounting, everything is the same. The only difference is that instead of the large elevator trim wheel, you have this lovely thing, this rudder trim wheel. And that mounts on, just as before, just slides onto the D, and you get that very nice action there. It fits not with a 14mm, but with a 20mm M4 countersunk. So that goes in there and then a nice little cap on top and there you have it. So that is a working rudder trim wheel. And you can leave it there or you may prefer this version. Now somebody on the Discord group tipped me off on this and there's a very simple method to create this white inlay and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. It's simply a case of using silicon. This is the stuff that a plumber would use around the bathroom and to seal all your units from, from water leaking down the side. But unlike the huge ones that those guys use that have a kind of plunger in the end and squirt out a sort of one centimeter wide tube, this kind of small job thing is what you need because it comes with a small applicator and then we can either. There's two ways of doing this actually. Um, you can either carefully squeeze it into here, which I'll do in a second, um, or there's another way and I will, uh, I'll tell you about that in a second. So let's get started. Okay, so here's method one. We're basically going to squirt the silicon in the grooves. Now don't worry about a little bit of it getting on the outside. because In fact, method two, we get a lot on the outside and we just don't worry about it. So we just get that squirted in there and then squirt it in here. You know what? Method 1 and Method 2 are pretty similar. I'll show you Method 2. 
You just squeeze a whole load of this stuff on. Like this. Just get it all over the place. I mean, you, if you can minimise where it goes, that's good. Because we do need to rub it off later. We need to rub off what's around the outside later. So there is still some merit in trying to control where you put it. But it's not that crucial. Okay. Now let's get the lid on this thing. We don't want that drying out. We're going to use that again for other jobs. Now, when I've done this job myself, I've often just rubbed my finger in it, but um, and plumbers tend to do that, but I kind of thought this is probably a useful way of not getting so much stuff on your finger. You basically want to get this rubbed in, like that. Get it all the way in there. And if we can, we will try and clear away some of what we don't need. You may want to use the applicator and squirt a bit more in. Or you might want to have a second pass at it and just kind of do a first version. I could probably use a little bit more in there. Alright, so that's step one. And then, at this stage, you can lightly remove some of what you don't need. Kind of don't rub it too hard. So you don't want to drag any of the silicon out from the grooves, but the grooves are quite deep, so you can get away with a fair bit of sort of rubbing at this stage. And yeah, I could use a little bit more in there, couldn't I? And that is basically it. Now you probably don't need me to explain method two to you now, it's probably fairly obvious, but Basically, if you don't have a small job silicon tube, uh, you, but you do have some silicon uh, lying around for whatever reason, just get a blob of it like that and just rub it in. And don't even try to be too precise. It does mean you've got to wipe a bit more off later, but it will be perfectly satisfactory as a method of doing this. And then we are we're done. Simple as that, and then the wiping off as before. And you've got a little bit more cleanup to do, but it's the same method. Leave that overnight, and then the next day, what you'll find is that the stuff inside the grooves is set pretty hard, and there will be all this stuff here, which will just start to peel away. Um, I can, you can probably see some, some little sort of bits in the grooves there and you find that if you just, just rub it, a little bit of friction, it just starts to lift away. I've got some little flakes of the stuff here. You can just sort of blow out and you can spend a little bit of time or a little bit more time, depending on what you can be bothered, just to sort of tidy up the little bits there. You can see that sort of starting to just peel away just to make it a little bit neater. And that is all there is to it. So we just put this on here and we put our 14, uh, 20, it's 20 mil isn't it, on top here and find our cap, there it is. And that's the rudder trim wheel.